Welcome back. As I told you, in the previous model, we looked at what exactly is the African Union, what are its policy organs, how is it structured, and at what level does it operate? Now we would interrogate what the vision of the African Union is, as it has defined it itself for itself in what is called the Agenda 2063. Agenda 2063 is Africa's strategic framework that seeks to deliver on the goals of inclusive and sustainable development, and is also a concrete manifestation of the Pan-African drive for unity, determination, freedom, progress, collective responsibility, pursued under Pan-Africanism and African Renaissance. The Agenda 2063 is anchored on what is called the AU Constitutive Act, the AU Vision, and of course, the what is regarded as the 50th Anniversary Solemn Declaration of 2013, and of course, the seven aspirations of the Agenda 2063. This sets out a national, regional, and economic blueprint for progress. Agenda 2063 itself was adopted by the AU Assembly on 31st of January 2015 at its 24th ordinary session. There are seven aspirations of Agenda 2063. The first is an Africa that is prosperous based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. The second is an integrated continent politically united based on the ideas of Pan-Africanism and the future and the vision of Africa's renaissance. The third is an Africa of good governance, democracy, respect for human rights, justice, and the rule of law. This is particularly very important for this particular model, as we will be looking at how does the AU implement its aspiration in this area as it relates to good governance, democracy, human rights, justice, rule of law, and of course, gender. The fourth aspiration is a peaceful and secure Africa. This is regarded as one of the preconditions for achieving prosperity because aspirations three and aspirations four combined gives the preconditions for prosperity on the continent. And we will be looking at this as it relates to silencing the guns, which is also a flagship agenda of the African Union or the Agenda 2063. However, the fifth aspirations, the fifth aspiration is an Africa with a strong cultural identity, common heritage, values, and ethics. The sixth is an Africa whose development is people-driven, relying on the potential of the African people, especially its women and youth, and caring for children. The last but not the least is Africa as a strong, united, resilient, and influential global player and partner. Now, a lot of people have talked about why a 50-year plan? Why is Africa waiting to 2063 before it can achieve its goals? This is not entirely correct because the agenda 2063 is divided into a series of five 10-year plans over the 50-year horizon. The purpose of de de developing the 10-year plan is one, to identify priority areas, set specific targets, define strategies, and policy measures required to implement the first 10-year implementation plan of the Agenda 2063. The second is to bring to fruition the fast-track programs and initiatives outlined in the AU Assembly Malabo decisions of June 2024, of June 2014. These fast track programs provide the big push and breakthroughs for Africa's economic and social transformation. The third is to provide information to all key stakeholders at the national, at the regional, and at the continental levels on the expected results and outcomes of the first 10 year plan and on the roles and assignments of responsibilities in the, in the implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. Last but not the least, is to outline the strategies required to ensure availability of resources and capacities together with citizens' engagement in the implementation of the first 10-year plan. This suggests that resources, capacities, and citizens' engagement are seen as key enablers for the implementation of Agenda 2063. Now, what are the flagship projects of Agenda 2063? There are 15 of them. The first is an integrated high-speed train network. The second is a Pan-African virtual and e-university. The third is an Africa community strategy. The fourth is the African Economic Forum. 
The fifth is the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. The sixth is the African passport and the free movement of people. The seventh is silencing the guns in Africa. The eighth is Grand Inga Dam Project. The ninth is the Pan-African E-Network. The tenth is the African Outer Space Program. The eleventh is the single African hair transport market. The twelfth is the continental financial institutions, which includes, of course, the African Monetary Union and the African Central Bank, amongst others. The thirteenth is the Great Museum of Africa. The fourteenth is the cybersecurity. And the 15th is the Excelopedia Africana project. For more on Agenda 2063, you can visit the African Union website, www.africanunionau.int forward slash Agenda 2063. If you also want to see how member states, RECs, and the continent is moving forward in implementing the Agenda 2063, you can also visit www.neper.org forward slash agenda hyphen dashboard, which has a dashboard on the implementation of Agenda 2063 as a monitoring tool for the progress that the continent is making. Now, let's look at what the seventh flagship, silencing the guns, means and how this relates to democracy, governance, human rights, elections, and gender. There is an understanding that for us to achieve a continent that has no war or civil conflict or gender-based violence and is able to prevent genocide, we must be able to address the root causes of these conflicts in themselves, the wars, and of course, the violent uh, crimes that we see on the continent. And for this to happen, the AU Assembly had endorsed what it calls the master roadmap of practical steps for silencing the guns in Africa by 2020. This decision was taken in 2017 by the Peace and Security Council. And the Assembly of Member States, you know, called on the Assembly, called on Member States and the regional economic communities to strengthen their accountability mechanisms and, amongst other things, stress the importance of promoting the involvement of youth and women in addressing the problems of proliferation and the use and movement of illegal weapons and illicit goods. Every September of each year, the African Union has declared September as Africa Amnesty Month for the surrender and collection of illegal owned weapons and arms. In 2020, the Executive Council adopted a theme of the year, silencing the guns, creating conducive conditions for Africa's development. In the December of 2020, the Silencing the Guns in Africa initiative was extended for another 10 years from 2020 to 2030. Now, what does this master roadmap say, particularly as it pertains to achieving issues related to silencing the guns on the continent? This master roadmap has quite a number of steps, political steps, economic steps, and social steps. For the purposes of this model, we will be looking at the political steps and particularly the fourth and the fifth element of the political steps. The fourth one speaks to deficits in enhancing and deepening democracy, respect of human dignity, human rights and good governance, including the absence of consensus among political parties or cardinal issues of the state and management of its affairs. This is seen as one of the major drivers of conflict and wars on the continent. And thus seeks through this master roadmap to address these deficits and set the continent on the path to peace, unity and prosperity. It also identifies the non-compliance of member states with AU instruments on peace, security, democracy, elections and governance, suggesting that for us to be able to achieve it, to achieve silencing the guns by 2030, we must work with member states to ensure their compliance to the various instruments that have been adopted on issues relating to peace, security, democracy, elections and governance. Now, in the next module, we will be looking at how is the AU addressing these deficits and how is it assisting member states to ensure that they are able to comply with the AU instrument on peace, security, democracy, elections, and governance. I'll see you shortly. <laughs>